Hello, everyone, and welcome to MQ, and we're excited to bring it to you. And that's September 8th through 10th. Now, I'm actually very, very excited to introduce Ray Don. Ray Don has an amazing web series that is out, out on YouTube. The entire series is out on YouTube. And yes, you can watch the pilot episode at our festival, but I know some of you are going to run and watch the YouTube right away. And you should, because it's hilarious. It is amazing. And, and it's so local. It is local, local, local. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Ray Don. How are you doing, Ray? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Happy to be here. Yeah. I'm glad to have you. So first, I um, in, in film, we do a lot of copycatting or, or as we say, homages. So mm -hmm. I actually stole my opening question from one of this year's documentarians who uh, I got to interview in episode one of MQFF News. And her question is basically, who's Ray? So why don't you tell our audience, who is Ray? Well, I mean, I am a lot of um, things, a lot of identities, um, I guess that, um, but probably, you know, not all reflected within like the the series or work I do, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm non-binary, um, I'm a parent um, and I'm a filmmaker and I make um, documentary and uh, narrative work, but I have been doing comedy because um, it really fuels me um, lately. And uh, yeah, that's wow. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, it, there's a couple. There's a couple things that I, I definitely want to unpack about the series and just you as a filmmaker. Um, I also think that. You being a parent also has a lot of. I, I could see some of that in City Folks, which is weird because people because because there's no. It's not a kids show. It's not a kids show. But I could definitely see some of that reflected within your show and in your directorial style. Your actors just seem so comfortable. Your performers just like it just seems so natural in a comedic sense because comedy is always never. I mean, sitcoms are just not natural. Like it's, you know, Friends was never natural. Will and Grace wasn't natural. It wasn't natural style uh, acting. But there was a comfort level with inside your characters that just I felt from watching that they had so much support on the other end of that camera to just be who they were and let the characters really live. Um, is that something that you really pride yourself in? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I'd say uh, if if I could just take it super far, like um, into that, you know, there's different filmmakers who have really liked to have worked on the, the roles, you know, with, with actors and then had them like help with dialogue and, and really, I mean, those were, those, those are some of like my, um, my heroes or whatever in filmmaking. Um, and uh, yeah, for this series, like I just wanted it to be uh, gender non-conforming actors. So that's how I started it out. And uh, the characters themselves are completely different. Well, not completely, but they're fairly different than when I cast um, these two actors who are drag king performers and are friends. So that's real. I mean, they, they really are close friends. Um, then I just was looking to put in um, to the script, like how how they are and, and things that would be, um, th these would be happening to them. And yeah, that is how I prefer to work. It doesn't always work out that way, but yeah. I um, yeah, so one that really came through extremely well um, because the honesty was there. And, and I remember, I'm not a starving artist anymore, but I remember being young and living in the Bay Area and having landlords coming to my door and being like, where's the rent? And just like, just opening that up with that already made me feel so connected and made me remember living in the East Bay and living in San Francisco and living in those areas in a place where you're just struggling to get by. And the most expensive thing in your life is the cardboard box that doesn't even work. And like that yeah. instantaneously had me sold. Um, 
where did the premise from for, for city folks really come from as an arc? Because I mean, there's a really clear arc to the, the season and I don't want to get into later into the season, but like, cause I want people to watch. Um, but what, uh, what was that? What was the start? What was the premise of that? Oh yeah. I mean, it, it does just come from, from housing insecurity that I've um, experienced throughout, you know, I, I don't know, 20 years. Um, I lived in New York for 10 years and um, I went through so many like uh, selling of buildings and then we had to move, you know, court cases. Um, it, I mean, I feel like within the 10 years, I probably lived in like 12 different places. Um, I've never lived anywhere actually for like longer than three years. And so um, just that sort of like housing insecurity, it's just been a, a, a major theme in my life. And I thought that within um, the Bay and especially like San Francisco in a place that really like prides itself on, you know, um, being a place that people can be themselves and that, you know, queer people can find somewhat of a safe haven. It's like at the same time, you know, very hard to like carve out a, a place for yourself. Um, yeah. And, and, and that, that to me is something that, and one of the biggest reasons why our sponsors and me and, and Jennifer wanted this year's festival to be actually general mission free is uh, economic equality. And a lot of people, th when they think of San Francisco and they think of California, they go, oh, those crazy equal liberals over there. But like, realistically, there is a whole bubble with inside our queer community and inside of the general community uh, at large of economic inequality. Uh, you know, the whole mm -hmm. idea of we're working nine to five jobs, not getting paid at the right, our cost of living is high, the rent is high. And so like for you to be able to combine the queer struggle, but also combine something that is just so generally relatable to everyone in every walk of life. I mean, there's conservative Christians out there who understand economic equality, you know, mm -hmm. like, so like being able to combine those two really made it a very flattering pilot for me. Oh. Um, but it also, you did such a, your actors, one of your, one of your main actors, and I can't remember her name, but the one that wears the robe in the first episode, she's holding coffee mug. Um, and she is such a good deadpan actor. Mm -hmm. There was there was a line and and they were on the computer and she just said that line and I remember looking at my husband and me and him went yep yeah because it was just so it was just so well thought out but just so honest and when you're looking for a roommate and a part of the premise is they're also they're looking for someone else to help with this enormous amount of rent in this house that is just not kept upkeep there's not and you know there's nothing there and, and actually the room that they're renting out isn't even a room <laughs> like it's not even a private space is, is one of the things that they point out um and anyone who's had to live with roommates and has been the person in charge of the house understands what it is looking for roommates now i was wondering were any of these ads inspired by real ads like because i'm sure that you've seen some of these crazy ads yeah. Yeah. I mean, I definitely say like, I, I mean, and this isn't just like with the roommate stuff, like also with the landlord stuff, like that um, truth is just way stranger than fiction. And I couldn't put it in there because it wouldn't seem, you know, real. Um, so yeah, there was one particular ad that was, <laughs> it was very, very long. Um, and this happened like, I think right before we were uh, filming um, and I was looking at this ad and sharing it with like other people, like part of the crew and everything like can, okay. Yeah. This, can you believe this? It's ads in, in San Francisco and especially like within the queer community. And I'd say going back to the nineties, because I lived here in the nineties, yeah. um, often are very long with a lot of like things that, you know, people are looking for. Um, and this particular one was like, well, I, I need a quiet space, um, but I need to use power tools. I need to have loud sex. Um, but I don't want other people to talk to me. <laughs> it's just like, wow. Um, yeah. And um, please correct me if I'm wrong. I do feel like every project that you pick has some type of political uh, aspiration or a morality message or something to that. And so what would be that message 
uh, inside city folks? What would you like if there was one thing that a viewer had to leave with? What would you like them to leave? Hmm. Um, I, I mean, I, I guess like housing is right. You know, I mean, it's, um, th that's, that's the main thing. Um, and then, you know, just more non-binary representation in media, um, which I feel like, you know, we're, we're really trying to, to uh, talk about more of like, what being a drag king is specifically with um, what we want to make the second season. And then we're going more into that, but this first season, yeah, just, I guess if I had to maybe that housing is a right. <laughs> yeah, and, and I completely agree with that. Housing is a right. And it's, it should be an unalienable right. Like many things should be, which unfortunately they're not. Any. And so I like to have every one of our queer filmmakers send a message to our youth in the filmmaking industry and our younger filmmakers, what's that golden piece of advice or thing you would say to them? Um, yeah, I mean, just like make something that's true from your heart and, and um, you know, listen to, to only like key people um, and keep your individuality. Um, and uh, thank you for that message to our future filmmakers, because they're definitely going to need that. Now, you said you kind of slipped and you mentioned a season two. So there is a season two coming. Well, um, yeah, we, we, we'd love for there to be a season two. We, we are trying to, to fundraise in, um, for it right now. And, uh, it's, you know, it's, it, it's tough. This is like the, the hardest part of the whole thing. Um, and yeah, we, we wrote for like a, a year, I'd say, um, me and, and two other co-writers, new co-writers, um, Rhea Kapoor, who's like a comedian, super funny. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we, we'd love to, to continue this on, but make it like adding some new elements to it, which is the whole through line of the story would be a drag king competition. And then we'd also have these little moments of, um, sketch comedy. Awesome. Yeah, no, that, I mean, the other, the other thing that I was going to say is that your, your first season has the elements of sketch comedy. It does have that element of feeling like, Oh, the, almost like kids in the hall back in the day. There's like, there's elements where it's very scripted, but it's like mm. kind of has that sketch feel to it as well. I, I don't know if you've ever saw kids in the hall. I loved kids in the yes. hall growing up. Like <laughs> it was very influential on my co comedy bone. Um, but I think that that, it, well, first, how can people help support that? Because I know as someone, you, do you guys have crowdfunding or you have a funder? I mean, because this is an important project and I would love to see a season two. So let's tell our audience how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, we do have a seed in spark right now and it, it's in its last two weeks. So yeah, there's still time to support it. Um, yeah. And then we'll have some other things that we're planning. <laughs> Now, um, I like to ask this of everyone. What is the one thing you would like our MQF audience to know about you and how they can find out all the information about you and what you hope that they will look for? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, go to the YouTube, um, check out all the episodes, our Instagram, probably a city folks web um on instagram that's probably where we're most uh, active um and we do have a website as well but i'd really say like the youtube the instagram those are the places to go yeah awesome and so i will definitely tag the instagram on this video yeah. or on any of our clips and make sure we forward that as well uh ray you're gonna be at the festival aren't you Yes. Yeah. 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 So come down, watch City Folks. Uh, you're going to love it um, and meet Ray and hopefully help support her project more. I think that a lot of you will connect with it, um, especially people who have lived in that, that environment before. You will just you'll, you'll love it. You will love every aspect of it. Me and Giovanni, my husband, enjoyed it. And I cannot wait for our MQFF family to see it at the festival, just like Ray had mentioned, all festival tickets this year on the general mission are complimentary. And our VIP passes, which were $150 last year, 
only $35. And those tickets include our opening night party. They also include all the after I after hours parties. You also get discounts at all the local restaurants that are part of uh, MQFF and a VIP lounge, uh, admission to the MQFF Academy Awards and our film of the year as well. So if you want to have a little bit more higher experience, you can always do the 35. But remember, all tickets for both of our, actually all three of our screening rooms, because I just added a new screening room today um, for Saturday. So all three of our screening rooms will be complimentary. You just need to go and secure your ticket on our website and our first block of tickets. Last time I checked, there were only 20 left for Friday or yeah, for Friday in our, in that block. So make sure if you want both days, get your both days, get Saturdays. We're not opening a second block until mid August. So if you don't get them now, you may not be able to get them. So make sure you get them. And for everyone out there, thank you for watching MQFF News. Thank you so much, Ray, for being our special guest today on episode four. Check out episode five coming soon. And if you've got some time, check out City Folks. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay.